What drove social change over time? In the 20th century, many groups began to challenge old ideas about race, class, gender, and religion. They wanted more rights and equality for everyone. For instance, the United Nations wrote the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to protect the rights of children, women, and refugees. This sparked many movements worldwide. Every push for change met resistance from those who wanted to keep things the same. One of these movements was global feminism. Women from different countries united to fight for their rights. They faced strong opposition from traditionalists who believed women's roles should remain limited. For instance, in the United States, opponents of women's suffrage argued that women's primary role should be in the home, not in politics. The Negritude movement celebrated black culture and heritage and encountered resistance from colonial powers who wanted to maintain control. French colonial authorities, for example, tried to suppress Negritude literature and art to keep their hold on African territories. In Latin America, liberation theology combined religious beliefs with the fight for social justice, often clashing with both church and state authorities who preferred the status quo. The Vatican criticized liberation theology, seeing it as too radical and a threat to church authority. These movements led to significant changes despite the pushbacks. Education became more accessible and new political and professional roles opened up for people of different races, classes, genders, and religions. For example, women gained the right to vote and hold public office in countries like the United States, 1920, Brazil, 1932, Turkey, 1934, Japan, 1945, India, 1947, and Morocco, 1963. Women also started going to college more often and taking on more jobs in many parts of the world, despite facing discrimination and backlash. For instance, women entering male-dominated fields often faced workplace harassment and pay inequality. The U.S. Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the end of apartheid in South Africa were other crucial milestones achieved against significant opposition. In the U.S., civil rights activists faced violent responses, including police brutality and attacks by white supremacist groups. In South Africa, anti-apartheid activists were imprisoned, and protests were met with violent crackdowns. In India, the case reservation system aimed to improve opportunities for lower castes, facing fierce resistance from upper caste groups. Upper caste communities often protested and sometimes rioted against affirmative action policies. The fight for equality didn't stop there. Many people began to protest the unfair environmental and economic impacts of global integration. Groups like Greenpeace, originally made to fight an underground nuclear test, and Professor Wangari Mathai's Green Belt movement in Kenya focused on protecting the environment, often clashing with powerful industries. For example, Greenpeace activists have been arrested and their ships have been seized during protests against illegal fishing and deforestation. On the economic front, organizations like the World Fair Trade Organization work towards fair trade practices, facing resistance from large corporations. Big companies often lobbied against fair trade regulations, arguing that they would increase costs and hurt business. So what really led to all these changes? It was the realization that everyone deserves equality and rights. The twist is, while the world has made significant progress, the fight for justice and equality continues today, often meeting resistance. We are all part of this ongoing story, and the next chapter depends on us. How will you contribute?